Hi guys, welcome to our final episode of the wedding panel. So today um, we will be covering all about gowns and bridal accessories. So without further ado, I'll let the beautiful ladies here introduce themselves. We have... Hello, I'm Jermaine from Talia. Hi, I'm Mayna from Juillet. And I'm Sonia from Juillet. Yeah, so today we are at Juillet studio and later we'll be showing you guys more about the gowns that they have over here. But today we'll just be answering, right? for now we'll just be answering the questions that you've been asking us in the past week or so. Um, as usual, if you have any other questions, just drop them in the comment box below and we'll get, it, uh, get back to you guys as soon as possible. Okay. Um, we all, for, for those of you who are watching from the IG story, um, IG live, um, do note that uh, the main video is on Archers and Co's Facebook page. Um, so if let's say you have any questions, uh, I may need to trouble you to go to Archers and Co Facebook page instead because then we will be monitoring the questions from there. Okay, so without further ado, um, I will just div, um, dive straight into accessories for now before we go into gowns. And then after that, um, Sonia will be also be sketching for us and now uh, we can go into pairing of gowns and accessories as well, okay? So, Jermaine, the first five question is for you. Of course, you guys can ask her questions as well, okay. Um, okay. wherever you feel like adding on. <laughs> okay, so the first question, somebody asks, uh, where does your inspiration for each hair piece come from? Because um, I like nature, so a lot of my inspiration comes from nature and of course also like the bride's um, personality mm. and their style and their preferences. So mm -hmm. all this uh, kind of... Uh, make up like the, the pile that you have yeah. over there okay so can you show us your favorite handmade accessory and why is it your favorite um actually all of them are my favorite because i spent a lot of time doing it can yeah you imagine so, yeah, yeah so sometimes like, i feel really sad like to like <laughs> give them Let away to part mm. them um but my favorite must be the tiara over here is my wedding tiara this is the oh. very first one that i made and it's also the reason why i ventured into the bridal scene right mm. so it's inspired yeah. by like your own wedding yeah like, is it because you couldn't find something that you liked in yeah. the market yeah that's why you decided to like make one for yeah. yourself and then like you know when you're young like you always like envision like you wearing a tiara and things like that so okay. yeah so this is what i always imagined since i was a little girl mm. you want to mm. explain a little about what is made what it what the tiara is made out of like is there a reason why it's so sparkly mm. so they are all made out of swarovski crystals as you can see they're very very sparkly and like um i made it in like you know the different uh heights as well so it kind of like elongates my face ah. yeah so my face doesn't look so round and i can also look a bit taller okay yeah <laughs> it's on a bit of height yeah, yeah it does okay thank you so i have really thin hair can hair pieces sit well on my hair and will it make it more voluminous aka pong pong <laughs> <laughs> um for people with maybe thin hair i think like in the previous episode the makeup episode they did mention some ways to make it more volume more pong pong mm. so you might also want to maybe stay away from the accessories that are a bit heavier okay. so because it will weigh your hair down okay. so you can look at the lighter pins uh yeah like that yeah so these pins are very light and you can kind of wear them separately as well okay yeah and, or maybe like a side clips that you can pin it at the side. Mm -hmm. You can do like a side swipe, swipe look. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you it can doesn't weigh your entire yeah. like hair down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So how can I accessorize if I have short hair? Mm. So for short hair wise, um, definitely you can always go with like a tiara. You for tiara like this and this, you can. Um, Wear it with long hair, short hair, mm. up, your hair all up or your hair all down or no hair also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very so, flexible. So yeah, and if you think that like, for example, like, you know, you can go for like a very royal, uh, regal kind of look like Princess Diana mm -hmm. or you, you know, she had short hair as well. Oh yeah, that's or, true. Or like, you know, Victoria Beckham also had short hair mm. and she also wore a tiara. Yeah, so and that's more funky also if you think that I, I'm not so princessy and things like that. Mm -hmm. You can also go with like a headband. Yeah. Or like a hair vine as well, which you can wear it kind of like in front, like a tiara, or you can wear it at the back as well. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah so it's like 
I think there's many different ways on mm. how, like what the accessories that you can use even if you have short hair or long hair. You want to show them like which is your latest collection? The latest one uh, must be this sparkly one. Oh, that's really, really sparkly. Yeah. So, um, they are made out of like um, all the Swarovski crystals and also the leaf. Mm -hmm. They are actually pressed with uh, real leaves. So, oh. every metal leaf is actually different. Ah. Yeah. So, so that means like, if let's say like two brides order the exact same thing, but mm. they will not be getting per se the exact same piece because it's pressed by like real leaf. Yeah. Oh wow. And also, I mean all handmade accessories, they won't look That's the true. same as well. Okay. Yeah. Fun fact, my wedding gown and bridal accessories from them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so can you advise me on the accessory I should use based on my gown? Mm. Uh, depending on... So how, like maybe like how do you go go about working with like brides who want mm. to like purchase something from you? What are typical typical questions or information that they need to provide you in order for you to give like the best recommendation? Yeah, yeah. Usually when brides come to me, then I'll ask them like what is their style? Mm. Um, if they have choose their gowns, mm. um, and is there any color themes or like whether they like gold or they prefer silver things mm -hmm. like that yeah yeah so let's say if like they are going for something more like um princessy like a ball gown mm -hmm. then i would recommend them maybe you can wear a tiara because like you know you have you have a ball gown mm. down below and then you want to elongate your height as well yeah. yeah so you can wear a tiara yeah and for um like brides who are maybe going for something more minimal mm -hmm. then maybe they want to look at something like pearls yeah, um, yeah. So this pose, um, you can wear them together. You can wear them separately as well. Okay. Yeah. So go for like different look. Right. Mm. Okay. So I think it's like as per all the other categories of um, vendors that we've spoken with in the past episodes, communication is always key. So just share whatever information that you have with your vendors, and they'll be able to advise you better based on what kind of style you're going for as well. Mm. Okay. Can. Let's check for Facebook questions. Oh, our moderators say don't have. Don't be shy, guys. Good. <laughs> if you have any questions, just ask and uh, we will get back to you. So, before we go on to the part where they sort of cross share their knowledge, uh, let's touch a bit more about gowns. So, why should I buy a gown if I can rent one? Okay. Uh, firstly, is because. Uh, a lot of people nowadays, especially for brides, they see a lot of uh, trends from mm. the internet okay. and they widen their imagination <laughs> at, the, at the same time. Okay. So uh, without uh, being realized, they actually have a specific dream gown that they want. Okay. And then if you rent a gown, actually it's very hard for you to uh, find your dream gown mm. at the same time. Like the time exact piece that yes. you want. Uh, yeah, at the same time to have fit your your body mm. and then your proportion, everything. I think so. like a lot of dream gowns on Pinterest and all that is mm. always from like the European countries. Uh, and the people right. there usually have like longer torso yeah. as yeah. compared to us, right? Yeah. So sometimes yeah. even if we fit you length, you can alter the length but mm. you can't really alter the the length of your torso yeah, unless you cut the entire gown and yeah, stitch right. it up again or even the strap is too low oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah so sometimes a certain part of the dress also it cannot be altered mm. perfectly also mm. unless you make a gown that's true yeah but we also offer um, bespoke to rent ah, so yes. yeah maybe you can explain to them what's the difference between bespoke to keep and bespoke to rent <laughs> 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 we spoke to keep is when we make your gown from scratch but we also uh, I mean like after the, your wedding you will keep the gown mm. and then for we spoke to rent is we make also your gown from scratch but after that uh, you give it back to us mm. then the price point also will be different mm. so if let's say you are a bit more budget conscious um, but you still really <coughs> really want to have a bespoke gown then one thing I consider is definitely bespoke to rent mm. yeah, yeah. So why are some gowns so cheap and some are so expensive? <laughs> Is there a visible difference? Uh, I think for normal people mm. who are not so familiar in fashion, they might have uh, difficulties to uh, 
re- uh, find it mm. in within like a glimpse of eyes. Yeah. Mm. But I think for us, it's very easy, especially in terms of the material. Mm. I think for workmanship wise, everyone now in the world, I think they know how to sew right, mm. sew in a very good um, uh, quality. Okay. But I think material is always different mm. when it comes to cheaper and. Uh, expensive. more expensive yeah mm-hmm. As if let's say it, just for an example uh, if it's a lace mm. usually cheaper lace they are more shiny okay and then you can see the embroidery uh, fi- uh the, the embroidery fiber threads, fiber threads. Oh, okay. yeah it looks very rare and very uh very rough okay yeah. like very messy yeah like. very messy uh, likewise if it's more expensive it looks more soft and it looks Fine. more Thicker, Finer, right? yeah, mm. fine, yeah. Okay. And usually they use like cotton thread mm. instead of like polyester thread or oh. nylon thread. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the entire feel of it is very yes. like, flowy yeah. instead of like very hard. Yes, very hard. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's from the material point of view, mm. Mm. I think similarly for accessories as well, right? Like a Swarovski crystal compared to like normal crystal mm. would definitely like be a difference and. Yeah will also be a difference in price point lah. Yeah. <laughs> so it depends on what you want to go for. Yeah. So back to gowns, like I've tried so many other gowns in other bridal studios, but I haven't found any that I really like. Can you suggest a few designs to me? I think this was also me. Mm. Like um, I tried like many different gowns at mm. many different places. And initially I had this idea that I wanted like a line gown. Mm. And I feel like, you know, mermaid would never suit me. Yeah. And because I, I tried so many gowns, I don't really like it, but you cannot really pinpoint what you want. Yeah. So I think it sort of helps when the designers can like propose designs that suits mm-hmm. like the type of body that you're going for and the kind of vibe that you have. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. So can you suggest a few designs to like brides who um, have no idea what they like, but at the same time, no idea what they really, really don't like as well? Um, I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will be hard if it's like we... Mm. They never see the person in real life. Mm, yeah. uh, it would be great if, let's say, we know their preferences. Mm. Maybe they like A-line mm. or mermaid. And we also need their measurements. Mm. Mm. So we will know what kind of body type mm. they look uh, best in what kind of shape. Mm. So will it be helpful if, let's say, like Bright show you pictures of them trying on dresses in like other places? Then they will tell you things like, okay, I like the top part of this but I don't like the bottom mm. part of these yeah. kind of things. Yeah, usually if they, they contact us via Instagram mm-hmm. or via email, so basically we haven't meet them. La. Yeah. If they w- are willing to share their mm-hmm. uh, so-called like fittings experiences mm-hmm. beforehand, yeah. they can just send pictures mm-hmm. so we roughly know and gauge what mm-hmm. kind of body proportion they have yeah. and we can directly suggest them right in the messages. Oh, line. okay. Yeah. So you don't like enforce that they come down yes, for... Yes, yes. Oh, okay. But of course, if they want to discuss in detail mm. everything, it it's very easier. hard to explain mm. in yeah. messages. So yeah. of course, need to arrange appointment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But I think what they can expect from us is we are, uh, we are very particular on design and mm. the end of the product. Mm-hmm. So when they are uh, interested to engage us, we will propose a design mm. with no fee. Oh, okay. So they don't need to confirm, uh, like pay in, deposit. Yeah, pay deposit yeah. first, and then then we do the design. Yeah. Because we feel of co- uh, even for ourselves, it, it's a little bit, uh, risky. Mm. Yeah. Because so, you know you don't really know exactly what you're gonna get. Yeah. Going correct. For. Yeah. yeah. So we put ourselves in their shoes as well, mm. So that's why we, uh, uh, propose sketches before they confirm. Right. So uh. Usually the sketches we try as much as possible to mm. be very similar to what the end product could mm. be. Yeah. Okay. So maybe yeah. yeah. I can just show you an example. Okay. Yeah. So this is a sketch of front and back of the gown. Which we try to portray exactly like the end product look like. Michelle has left the scene. <laughs> to show you guys the dress. So the gown involves like hand embroidery, glitter. So the quotes on the gowns is actually uh, hand embroidered. Wow. Yeah, together with the birds and the stars. Yeah. yeah. So there's like there's more than one layer to the mm. gown, right? Yeah. And 
yeah, we design the embroidery also ourselves. And we do beadings on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the gown as per the sketch. Yeah. <laughs> Has many bride chosen this like yeah. this kind of like designs? Yeah, yeah, actually a lot of our brides inspired by this gown. Ah, yeah. Okay. So they are actually going to do bespoke something similar. Mm -hmm. yeah. But to add in their own personality yeah. into the gown. Correct, right, correct. Yeah. Kimisha is coming back into the scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when gown designers say that it is handmade, is it really sewn by hand? And is it really made from scratch? Like how can I tell the difference as a commoner who doesn't know anything about gowns and sewing? Hmm. Handmade is definitely by hand lah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everything by hand. <laughs> so we do use sewing machine. Yeah. Mm. But of course our seamstress will control with their hands, right? Or everything. Um, the lace, of course, we have our personal suppliers from mm. overseas or local. Mm. Um, but we applique everything by hand. By hand mm. Beading Depends also. on our design knowledge and mm. all. So how can I tell the difference, like, whether is it really, like, handmade or is it, like, mass-produced by, like, a machine? <laughs> mm. That's a tough question. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, like... Yeah, uh, I think to be fair, it is a really tough question. Like, you need to really train your eyes. Yeah, yeah. train your because eyes. Because I think Aesthetic we la. have... Yeah. Well, yeah. They we see it day in, day out, so they'll be able to tell the difference. <laughs> but for us, it's like... Yeah. How do you... How do you, But I think if it's something that is really bespoke and done from scratch, um, when Sonia sketches it out for you, and when the end product is delivered to you, you can tell that she, it's impossible that she sketched something that you know, it's already in the market based yeah. on what you like. It's yeah. not, it's, it's a very huge yeah. coincidence for that to happen. Mm -hmm. yes. So I think, you know, do your homework, try to visit more um, bridal studios, go to as many as you want. Mm. Same as like photographer, videographer, right? To find out the person that you know you can really work with, yeah. um, the chemistry, the vibe, the direction that you're going for. Because everybody has their unique selling point, mm. then you'll be able to tell like which one you're more comfortable mm. to work with. Because after all, making a gown is also quite a long process. Yes. Um, you have to go for multiple fittings to make sure that everything like is fitted perfectly. So, um, yeah, in short, it's hard for commoners to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think you just need to find a vendor that you can really trust and work with. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Yes. So what kind of materials are used for accessories or even details on a gown? Do they make them more expensive? Uh, I would say... Um we rarely use accessories because I would say accessories is a, like a separate piece. Mm. It's not like what it is attached to the gown. Okay. So I would say accessories would be like considered like a veil. Mm. And then we also did last time make like a corsage. corsage. Okay. Uh, uh, similar to like a headpiece, those okay, kind, yeah. but it mm. is actu actually attached uh, to the gown, okay. but with a pin. Okay. Yeah, but the most common thing that we usually do is embellishment. Right. Embellishment have also different type. Mm. Have lace embellishment. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think we are showing you guys on the screen as well. Yes. You can see the diff examples that they have been talking about. Mm. Yeah. Lace embellishment is the most common mm. every bite would like mm -hmm. <laughs> and then other than that would be beadings okay then lately uh, bright also exploring hand embroideries mm. like the first gown that we showed in the yeah. Yeah. very familiar then, veil <laughs> <laughs> michelle's veil <laughs> yeah this is michelle's veil <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the hand embroidery can be even in the on the veil also mm. it doesn't have to be on the gown mm. yeah and then uh other than that there will be three D flowers, mm. feathers. Yeah, ah, yeah, very pretty. Yeah, beading, three D flowers, and feathers can also combine with the lace. Yeah, so, so it, the possibility is endless. Yes, mm -hmm. the possibility is endless. Can also even add hand, hand embroidery at the on same top. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think it depends on what you what you what want. Yeah, yeah, what's important to you then. Of course, you can make all the magic happen. Yeah. I always call them my magician. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> but we are little elves. We yeah. 
<laughs> with our own uh, OT <laughs> <laughs> and thread and needle. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, we have two Facebook questions. Uh-huh. So the first one is for for Jermaine. Mm. Is Tiara still popular among your clients? Actually, I think car, um, currently people are going for more simple. Mm-hmm. Um, they kind of like um, hair combs more. Okay. Like you can wear it with your veil as well. Mm. Yeah, so it, I mean, it will sit very nicely like above your veil. And even after the ceremony, when you take off your veil, you can still wear it on. Mm. So it's very versatile also. Um, and also like hair vines like this, mm-hmm. where you can wear at the back and also like in the front. Mm-hmm. So like things like this. And actually this is really versatile because mm-hmm. like even after the wedding, you can also wear it as a necklace, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. you can so nice. there's hooks over here. So mm-hmm. you can kind of hook it up. You can wear it as a necklace. Oh, yeah. Wow. So it's actually, very creative. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can repurpose it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you provide like a chain for yeah. the necklace. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. So the good thing about like you know buying and having your bespoke um, mm. accessories is that you can be like you know repurpose it mm. and you can still wear it and use it in your mm. daily wear. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's so nice. Yeah. I would like that. Necklace would yeah. be wearable. Yeah. 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 Or even a bracelet. Oh. Yeah. You can. <laughs> it's a really really nice yeah. like accessory. Like yeah. a statement piece. Yeah. As you can see, all girls are going crazy about all this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you put Weilun here, then it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the scenes. <laughs> okay, so the next question from Facebook is um, for the ladies. Um, what is the lead time taken to? What is the lead time to book a gown, mm-hmm. especially if this person wants a bespoke one? Okay, to be in general, we need six months at least from their wedding day. At least. Yeah, at least. <laughs> <laughs> to be <laughs> safe. Yeah. But of course, if you are going for a very, very simple gown, mm. of course, we will still consider to take uh, if it's less than six months. Mm. But I would say in general, it's six months. Mm. Because the first two months is for us to like propose design and discuss about it. Yeah. And then the next four months would be for... Uh, making the gown itself mm-hmm. and doing fittings mm-hmm. until it's finally ready Done. to ready collect. To be yeah. <laughs> okay, so book early to avoid disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also come with uh, a material of um, wedding theme. Uh, I would say wedding theme, like a wedding venue mm, or correct. what? What kind of inspiration yeah, you roughly like, have? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like if let's say you don't have a date, don't have a venue, don't have a vibe that you're going for. Then it's very hard for anybody to give mm, you to any start, advice. Yeah. Yeah. We have to have something to kickstart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have, to have ingredients to cook. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Maybe try gowns. Uh. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Like try gowns. Mm, correct. Mm. Previous fittings. Uh. Mm. Yeah, I think one important thing is that they, they, I, I feel like brides should be more open to try different type of gowns. Mm. Mm-hmm. Don't correct. be very fixated that, okay, I die, I want to have a A line, I die, I want to have a ball yes. gown. Yes. You, you'll never know what you'll end up going with at the end yeah. of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, now that we're done with Facebook, um, please ask more questions if you have. So can you elaborate on what kind of gown suit which body type? Like for example, apple, pear, straight, straight or body type? Triangle? Yeah, there is a, oh, okay. yeah. There is okay. a box. Rectangle. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that was the question. Like how, 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 what kind of gown suit, what kind of body? You can answer. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if it's a pear shape, usually they have uh, bigger hips than their shoulders or, yeah, of course, their shoulders. Um, so if, let's say the bride don't want to accentuate it, we suggest a line, mm. so it really can cover the hip area. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, for the shoulder right usually they have a narrower mm. for the pear shape yeah so we suggest okay. maybe off shoulders or a halter neck okay so it will broaden their shoulders more mm. then but you will look proportionate mm. la, mm. top and bottom okay mm. so what about apple apple uh apple actually there is no apple shape apple is similar to pear Oh, but okay. have a inverted triangle. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, inverted okay. triangle is the other way around of pear shape. Okay. So broad shoulders but small, small hips. hips. Yeah. So if broad shoulders and small hips, usually I would uh, I 
would suggest if people wear A line as well. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they are very proportionate. Ah, like mm. their waist is also Correct. smaller. Yeah. Mm. And then for inverted triangle, most importantly is the neckline. Mm. Yeah. So they cannot wear halter neck. That is a big no. Okay. Because mm. it will make them look muscular. Okay. Yeah. And then and second off shoulder. Off -shoulder. Off yeah. But not all kind of off shoulder also it depends. Mm. Yeah. If like loose, maybe still okay. Mm. But those like very tight, mm. fitted and then go to the side. Yeah, but okay. they can suit straps very well mm. because yeah, they can okay. carry it with okay. their broad shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Like they call it like hanger shoulder. Mm. Sometimes ah. people call it hanger shoulder. It's like something hanging <laughs> on, the, on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. And then rectangle. Rectangle. For rectangle, I think wants to define your waist more mm -hmm. because the rectangle is like almost similar all the shoulders measurement, the hip and the yes. waist. Okay. Yeah. So usually you want maybe design with belts. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so it will define more to your waist. Mm. Mm. So if I have huge hips, do you think I can still look good in mermaid gowns? Depends on your measurements. <laughs> total measurements. Mm -mm. Because uh, overall, if you are uh, hourglass body shape, mm. although you are, your hips is very big, although you are UK, uh, plus size lah basically mm. but you have a hourglass body you can still carry mermaid yeah i think the important thing about mermaid is like where it starts mm. flaring yeah. up right yes mm. correct so usually if you are shorter then you start it slightly lower mm. so mm. you kind of like a, have a longer a higher higher uh, taller body mm. yeah so in other words Come and take measurements. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to just give you a straight answer, yes or no, because yes. everybody's body is different. Yeah. 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 Because during fittings, then we will adjust mm. at the same time also. Yeah. It yeah. also depends on how many inches the heels are, right? Mm. Like it makes Correct. a difference, right? Yes. Yeah. So I have flabby arms, but so many gowns are strapless. What can I do? Get a bespoke dress. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can... Uh, make a cape like nowadays it's in mm. on trend right the mm. capes yeah so it's to maybe a cape like this uh one thing cover a little cover, bit cover yeah a little bit only lah mm. mm. only here okay yeah so you can add on the cape for the dramatic if of your march mm. in then yeah. after that if you think it's too troublesome you can always just take it out mm. when you right. are mingling Detachable. around yeah yes. for like cable shots and things like that mm. yeah so are there any certain dress designs or cuttings that fit better or don't fit short or petite brides? Mm -hmm. So basically, what, what is suitable for petite brides? For petite brides, okay. <laughs> I'm, I myself is a petite bride. <laughs> okay, to be honest, I don't wear ball, gown, ball gowns at all. Okay. Because I feel ball gowns makes me look like I'm sinking in. Mm. But I but I feel that we still can carry a line. Okay. So not those very poofy. poofy. Yeah. A line mermaid definitely possible. If mermaid is what I said previously, it depends where the feet and the flare starts. Mm -hmm. So if you are petite, then maybe the make it flare slightly lower. So you kind of like longer legs, mm -hmm. have longer legs, and then if you are tall, then both ways can lah. Okay. Tall have more flexibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone with height will have more flexibility. More options. Yeah, more options. <laughs> but remember, you can heighten your leg with by the heels. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. <laughs> by the yeah. heels higher. So heels will be your savior. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you must train to walk in them. Otherwise, yes. you know, yeah. on your wedding day, you will. Buy oh, something okay. with a platform in yes, the front. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the, thick, the more complicated yeah. instead of those super sharp ones. Yes. Yeah. Don't kill yourself on your wedding day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how many gowns do you think we need for a full wedding day? Hmm. That is very subjective, right? Mm -mm. Yeah. It depends on people's culture. Mm. Yeah. But nowadays at least they have two usually. Mm. Yeah. But it really depends. Yeah. yeah. I have a bright I don't know whether she's watching this. She has like <laughs> seven outfit changes. Wow. <laughs> Maybe we are talking about Wei Qi, I don't know. <laughs> she has so our many outfit changes that we had to do a segment on like, okay, morning wear this, yeah. morning part two wear this, <laughs> morning part three wear this. So 
that we don't forget. And on top of that, she wanted to match her gown with like different pair of shoes and accessories as well. Oh, wow. So wow. yeah, Details. yeah. So in her run sheet, I had to put out a segment. And not only her, her husband also <laughs> changed a few times. <laughs> yeah. So usually guys always just like one suit conquer yes. the whole day. But this groom was just different. Like he also had many outfit changes with her. I mean, it was quite fun to watch them like changing in and out throughout the day. Yeah, but it was like a fashion show. Yeah. So it depends on your priorities in your wedding. Like for this bride, when I ask her her top priorities, because usually I ask my couple, what's your top three priorities for, for your budget allocation? Mm. She told me, my Michelle, my priorities are gowns, gowns and gowns. <laughs> like, okay, noted. So she has like, Seven, yeah, six to seven outfit changes. Oh, yeah. yeah, so if you are more fast free, you don't really care mm. about how many gowns you have. I think the typical standard one nowadays is like they have one, one. morning dress mm. and then they change into the choir for tea ceremony. Mm. Mm-hmm. Then they use the same morning dress for the first march in mm. or sometimes a new dress for second or uh, first march in. Yeah. And then the second dress is either evening gown or mm. like a chong sam or, or detachable piece. Yes, mm. or detachable piece. To like, just differentiate the gown a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And also to make it easier to walk yeah, um, when you take table shots. Mm. Mm. And faster also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to change the entire <laughs> she won't ruin the you. hair. Yeah, 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 correct. I'll help you carry your gown. <laughs> <laughs> it's a back breaking job. <laughs> If you have many tables. <laughs> yeah, but because if you move from one table to the other um, and you ha- your gown is very long and the table, like the gap between the tables are very, very small, then everybody will be stepping all over your gown mm-hmm. um, and you will be like, excuse me, excuse me, sorry, sorry, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So yeah. it, it wastes a lot of time, actually. Yeah. yeah. So what's the unique selling point of your gowns? We won't say it's unique selling point. Mm. Uh, maybe our signatures. Okay. Um, more to illusion neckline mm. and um, embroidery as well, hand embroidery 3D and 3D beading, wow. 3D flowers, yeah, and laces. Yeah. So. Mm. Other than that, uh, we also keep our price like fairly uh, reasonable. Reasonable, mm. yeah, for bespoke. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, one of our USP also. Yeah, but I think mm. it's a bit hard for us to tell the audience directly, I mean, exactly how much we charge because yeah. it's dependent on the type of the, the d- design that you're going for. Like, it can the be details. the same design. If you choose a different type of lace, it's another price. If you choose this type of lace, another price, depending on where the lace is coming from as well. Correct. Yeah. yeah, so I think there's a lot of discussion that goes on be- before even deciding on the price. Mm. So that's why I think um, with Juliet, they always provide sketches mm. um, until you are very sure of, okay, I want this design. And then once you choose your laces, then you she will tell you how much it costs like in total. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speaking from experience. <laughs> uh, and after, thank you. Yeah, thank you. PR for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only after that, then like you make the deposit of yeah. like uh, the deposit, and then they will start work working on your gown. Yeah. So it's not to say that you need to like be hundred percent sure of what yes. you want, but at least like 90, 98 percent sure <laughs> can make changes along the way yeah, as long yeah. as it's not too drastic that yeah. it's equal to making a new gown altogether yeah because yeah, yeah, right. you know sometimes you get inspiration from here and there then yeah. you know you want to add on more details mm. but Especially for accessories also right you will know the end cost after mm. the final design is it? Uh, yeah but i'll give them like a range mm. yeah. yeah like a range yeah, yeah so that they like. know of their yeah. budget they don't yeah. go over yeah. Yeah. yeah like if they want to top up like change from normal crystal right. to Swarovski's crystal, then Jimmy will also tell you how much um, mm. top-up is required. Mm. Mm. So Sonia, you, I heard that Sonia want to share with us how she, <laughs> how she <laughs> sketch. This so, is the moment. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so what we are going to okay. do is that um, Sonia will do some sketches. Okay. There is a close-up angle that um, will show you what she's drawing or sketching. And then at the mm. same time, we will still continue answering questions. Then from time to time, the camera will pan from us to Sonia's um, sketches. And uh, after that, we can talk more about how we match um, different accessories to the gowns. So today, I will sketch. I would say rough sketch <laughs> <laughs> because the detailed one will take very long. Uh, very, very long, long yeah. yeah. But it will be based on this lace. So I'll try to sketch as similar as possible. Uh, thank you. With so this nice. lace. Yeah, so the lace that you see on the gowns, right? They don't literally just pop, put it on the dress. Yeah. They have to like cut it out 
and then place it on the gown mm. and then before they sew it on they actually pin it on the gown first yeah. so that if you don't like the placement of the lace they can actually change, change it yeah. before they sew it on to cover certain areas mm. needed like maybe you want to cover your tummy yes, mm. yeah. then you distract it certain with like flashes. laces <laughs> yeah. so yeah. this lace already have some beading, beading some laces it. comes with beading mm. some not mm. so it depends oh there's yeah. sequins also yeah, yeah. correct yeah. But no 3D flowers. Usually there are no 3D flowers. Okay. So the 3D flowers, most of the time we have to add it on our own. Ah, yeah. Handmade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, handmade. Okay. Can it's right. Sonia will sketch her signature yeah. mermaid? Mermaid gown? Yeah. yeah. Mermaid. Mermaid okay. is the most sellable. Yeah. I wouldn't say sellable, la, most favorite. Yeah. Top most pick. asked for. Mm. Yeah, asked for. Design. Okay. Do we have any question on Facebook? Okay. Somebody say accessories are so pretty. Oh, thank Enjoy. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very abstract. Anything, ah? Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. So while Sonia is sketching, maybe the two of you can just share with us. Apart of apart from picking a gown or accessory that looks good, what are the other factors that brides should consider? Mm. I think they have to look. Uh, they have to feel comfortable in it. Mm. It's their style. It's mm. not because it's, it's in trend. In trend. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone is wearing it. Then I, I should wear it too. Yeah. So you have to be very comfortable, mm. and you feel confident uh, Yeah. When walking down the aisle. I think that's very mm. important. Agree. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because when you look back at your wedding pictures, right? Mm. Then you will need to feel, ah, that's my wedding. Yeah. yeah. That was the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like not. I'm trying to be this person. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. Yeah. Okay. So the next few questions are basically um, the pairing. So maybe before we go to the pairing, we can go to the last question, which is, what is the dream accessory or dream gown that you wish to create for your clients? Because I think as creatives, you guys have something that you really, really want to create. Like maybe like before waiting for a bride to come to you with an idea, maybe you want to create like something different, right? So mm. what are the other techniques or other dream accessory or gown that you, you wish that a client will come and tell you, hey, Mina or hi, Jermaine, I really, really want this design, that kind of thing. Yeah, do you hope for like any design in particular? First one, yeah. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> for me, I really love hand embroidery because it is really from scratch. I don't need to scroll down for laces. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, based on the supplier, what laces do they have? Mm. For hand embroidery, it's really coming from our creative mind. Mm. Can be anything. Okay. Can be any animals, any shapes, any objects. Mm. Something okay. that is really meaningful for you. To the like, client. Yeah. yeah. Like with Angelina Jolie. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her gown is like sketches, uh, drawings of her their, kids. Yeah, of her kids. So it doesn't have to be all dreamy and princessy uh -uh. to be like a bridal gown. I mean, as long as it means something to you, like, you know, mm, as for all other. It's very meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think similarly, uh, I, I, I really appreciate when brides, they really know what they want mm. and then they have this team and then they also allow you the creativity to actually like work on it. Mm. Yeah, then like I, I feel like to create um, a dream piece for this bride who says like, oh, this is so me and I really love it. Mm. I think that is kind of like a dream to me as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So like satisfaction in creating something that you know that someone would definitely like yeah. and feel comfortable in. Okay. So guys, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Just communicate your preferences and like yeah. your desires to the creatives. And I think one thing that a lot of creatives don't like is being micromanaged. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like you can tell them like your preferences and all that, but at the end of the day, like, you're paying them the you're paying them for their creative fee to to basically do up something for you. Um, you can tell them our preferences or that, give feedback as much as you can based on the sketches or inspiration pictures. But I think if let's say you really want to like, okay, how many, how many track of laces yeah. you're going to use? How many beadings uh, you have run into one pieces wire? Pieces of crystals. <laughs> it's just too much work. Yeah, so I think don't be too, too restrictive and try to give them like the freedom to, a bit lah, a bit of freedom <laughs> to do, to do what, they, what they do best lah. So let's look at what Sonia is sketching. 
Oh, finish already? Huh? Ah. No, 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 heaven, oh heaven. <laughs> no, we're just trying to see what, what you're working on. Yeah. Wow, it's very pretty. Thank you. Yeah. Will you be able to explain what you are currently doing? Yeah, it's actually a mermaid silhouette. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm just trying to draw something that is not so time consuming. Okay. Yeah, but I feel it's a quite of like a trend and quite not so, I would say, crazily expensive mm. because I will be drawing like so-called the half embellished gown. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I think like you can also choose like whether you want the details to be only on top mm. yep. or all the way focusing on the train mm. yep. or yeah, full so lace or half lace. Yeah. Yep, correct. Oh. Or no lace at all. Yeah, <laughs> no lace at all, simple satin dress. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I think, increasingly popular nowadays. Yeah. yeah, structure. So typically, how many, like, sketches do you give a client? Minimum is three, la, Okay. Three, yeah. But can be up to nine. Mm. I mean, depending on how much they share with you, then you're Correct. able to yes. create accordingly, right? We also give uh, a lot of laces option mm. so they can choose mm. so it's beyond just the usual lace that you see you can mm -hmm. choose like maybe one sketch then three options of lace or uh. four options of lace yeah because some laces don't really work with all the design designs yeah. right yeah okay i think i'm roughly there wow that was yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah maybe you can just elaborate yeah. a little so. So this is actually a uh, illusion, as what we were uh, saying that we are uh, our signature, signature is like illusion neckline. Mm. So this is a off shoulder illusion neckline mm. with the lace that just now I showed you, mm. and then actually uh, this is called uh, half embellished gown mm. okay. because we don't use the lace on the whole piece of the gown. But then if you don't want it to look so plain. We can also combine it with like glitter to oh, layers, or, yeah, yeah la layers underneath. Mm. Yeah, it could be also like a very fine French chantilly lace. Okay, it's just to let to make create it, dimensions. Yeah, create dimensions on mm. the gown. Okay. So maybe the base lace could be overall of the gown, but the floral embroidery lace that just now I was showing could be on top. Okay. But it wouldn't be on the whole gown. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe just at the top portion and then a little bit around the scattering. Yeah, the, the knee. Yeah. Mm. And then scatters down. Okay. Yeah. So this is a mermaid silhouette. Rough sketch. Rough <laughs> sketch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you, Sonia. Yeah, thank you to Michelle. <laughs> okay, shall we go and see what? pairing we can do uh, yeah. between like the accessories and the gowns. Okay, I'm just gonna off my laptop. Okay, let's look over there. Okay, I'm gonna let the professionals mm. do what they do best. Okay. Want to bring the yeah, accessories? I think this Sure, bring maybe this I will choose and I'll bring over there. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Again, also? Oh, yeah, I'll choose and I'll bring you. over there. Yeah. I help you bring this one. I put, put here. You choose your gown. Oh, okay. So maybe you can just pick like um, a gown and then you, sh you just explain a little about the gown mm -hmm. and then um, you can recommend like which accessory goes well. So obviously I'm completely useless here. I'm going to just move <laughs> away. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Sure. I think it's okay. Just this is, yeah. uh, I wouldn't say a very formal look kind of gown because it uses a very light kind of material. It's not, it's not like a very heavy kind of bridal gown. So usually we will recommend this type of gown for like pre-wedding shoot. And then you get a very airy movement with this silk chiffon and it's very light so it's easy to carry on during your mm. track so called the travel Trip, trekking yeah. <laughs> trekking <laughs> pre-wedding shoot yeah and then since this look is very grecian 
yeah. So, actually, so you can actually have something like that. You can wear it like a tiara. You look like mm -hmm. a Greek goddess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or even at the back of your hair. Yeah. You can wear it at the mm -hmm. back. Yeah. If you like your to maybe like do like an updo, then you can actually wear like a hair comb at the back of your hair mm -hmm. with a bun, with a low bun maybe. Yeah, it suits yeah. very well. Like this one has like mm. all the leaf. Yeah, leaf correct. Yeah. Also. It's like in one theme. Yeah. 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 Without being have to us to working together. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 <laughs> we have the similar style. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's next? Another gown would be... Weiji? Yeah, can. Weiji's gown? <laughs> <laughs> Weiji's gown. Since you are in the topic already. Yes. Yeah. I wonder if she's watching it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is illusion neckline. So as you can see, if, uh, if it touches your skin, actually it's somehow slightly see-through. And if you are asking whether it holds Yes, it is. Yeah. Because the illusion neckline, actually, we make it very uh, fitting. Body fitting. Yeah. And then there is a uh, bra cup in the inside, so you basically mm. don't need to wear bra. Okay. Yeah. And then this may look like it's sleeveless, but when you wear it, actually, it looks like a heart shape. Mm. Mm. Sweetheart, 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 sweetheart neckline. neckline. Yeah. Correct. I think the focus of this dress was the, the train. train. Yes, right? mm. the train has the... Scallop. Floral scallop pattern. Yeah. So it's a two meter train length. Mm -mm. Yeah. So, so it's like very grand entrance. Yes. So she reserved this for <laughs> her second last yarn change. Yeah. Which is the first March in. Yeah. Yeah, so for this she actually let down her hair. Mm, mm. Correct. Very nice. Yeah. Because it's a low back. Mm. So she can have the, the uh, hair, hair, hair down. Hair down, yeah. yeah. So if you have your hair down and you, because of the back, right, you want to mm -hmm. kind of like let people see the back, you don't want your hair to cover, mm -hmm. you can actually do like a side sweat, look with like a, like a hair piece at the side. Mm -hmm. So even like, you know, you take pictures with your guests and all that, you can still see in your pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Then okay. more gowns. Maybe we'll show, off. yeah, plunging. The coral, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so you have some rental pieces to share, but, yeah. but very limited options because yes. it's mainly um, bespoke. bespoke too. But the gowns that we are showing now is actually all Rent. available mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the right rental. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this is a cami strap with a plunging neckline, so you can see the. The center can see through the skin. Mm. Yeah, but it's still a white gown. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So it's very minimal, very, uh, very, uh, no elaborate yes, train. Yes, subtle. Very subtle kind of glam, understated yeah. glam. Correct. Yeah. There's a lot of details that yeah that goes on with to this beadings. Well. A lot of beadings. It's a different lace lah because yes. usually people tends to choose Flower. flowery lace. Mm. This one is more to leaves. Branches. Yeah, yeah, and then we call it like a coral. Ah, yeah, coral gown. There's a coral yeah. pattern here. Under the sea. And the sea. <laughs> yeah. It's like the life under the sea. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot of details to the gown, so it's really pretty, and I don't want to like steal the limelight over <laughs> here. You can actually choose something little sparkles in your hair. Oh, you can nice. wear them like yeah. separately. Yeah, very nice. Um, if you're having like maybe like a mermaid braid. You can wear it separately or you can wear, wear them together at the back of your hair as well, like a hair comb, if you mm -hmm. put them together. Mm -hmm. So they are, it's a very versatile piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Any other gowns you would like to show? Sleeve, uh. This Can one? Or off shoulder? This one? Yeah. Okay, this one is since we haven't shown you with sleeve. Mm. This one is illusion neckline also, but with sleeve. So uh, it's also see-through, but this bride didn't want it to be super so see-through. See okay. So we actually have a layer of uh, see-through bustier. Ah, yeah, half, okay. We call it half see-through bustier. So it's still somehow a little bit see-through, but not super, super see-through. Mm. Because the materials uh, siphon. Mm. Oh, for okay. the bustier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there is a sleeve. So usually 
uh, we don't recommend bride to wear necklace, mm. and they can focus more on like earrings or yeah headpiece. Mm. Yeah, so maybe then the bag is a diamond cut bag. Mm. Diamond cut bag. Yeah, so for brides who are wearing this, usually I recommend like a up to because the the back is really very pretty and then you can actually do like a low bun with these pieces depending if you like gold or silver. Yeah. Okay. So sparkly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any yeah. other gowns that you want to the minimalist uh, or the minimalist? Gown? Minimalist. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This okay. one. Okay, this one is a very minimal gown. Mm. So usually for minimal gown, we play on the cuttings. Okay. The and for this gown, the cutting detail is actually at the back. Ah. So actually, the previous bride had like a tattoo behind. Okay. Mm. So she's and she's very edgy. So okay. she want to have like a very oh like a slanted yes neck. like a from big to small kind of hotter neck okay. straps oh. so it's very unique mm. yeah to accentuate the tattoo so. yeah mm. actually yeah so if you have a very plain gown usually I would suggest the bride to play around more on the the accessories mm. that she will be wearing yeah. on that day. So for this gown, I actually see there's actually like two poles over here. You can also match it with poles like this. Mm -hmm. They are very elegant. Uh, and also now I think poles are in trend as yeah. well. Okay. Yeah. So I think they are very timeless as well, yeah. even classic. though they look classic. yeah very classic. Yeah, but yeah, also very trendy now. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to nice. show some of the detachable skirt that ah, okay. you made? So actually this one, the first gown, Actually, it comes with a detachable skirt. Yeah, so this is a mermaid silhouette. I wouldn't say um, the classic, classic mermaid. This is more like the yeah, casual yeah. kind of mermaid. Mm. Uh, so it's not very poofy at the bottom. Not very so flare, it's very light. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and then because the bride want to have a significant different kind of silhouette, mm. yet not so uh, crazily more expensive to mm. spend, to top up, for so we suggest on adding on the detachable oh. train we call it detachable so sparkly. Awesome. yes so With the detachable um, skirt also ha using the same material as the main gown the mm. lace yeah so maybe i just show you roughly how to wear it this is actually a half uh, half detachable skirt we call it half because you can it just doesn't wear. cover all the way yeah. to the front so it's just like that and then with the strap on, you just hook. Oops, my tummy is so big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so something like that. Uh, That's why it's called half. Okay. If full, then it will just cover all the way the to the whole, front. Yeah. So yeah. for this one, they can still see the front details yeah, of that correct. dress. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, other than that, it will be like something like cape. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? Okay. Okay, so we have no more questions. And uh, Jimmy, you want to join us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we have come to the end of the last episode. Uh, so today is the fifth episode. We have covered um, photography, videography, uh, makeup and hair styling, mm -hmm. florals, and today is gowns and accessories. Mm. So I think we pretty much covered a lot of areas for your wedding. Um, we hope you find it useful somehow or another and we hope that you enjoyed um, all the five episodes that we have had. So thank you again to all the vendors who join us, um, yourselves included. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much, Michelle. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so today feels like a little um, housewarming at yeah. um, Juliet's studio. And Mini I think studio. We're <laughs> going for celebratory dinner after this. So um, if you have anything to feedback to us, please just leave it in the comment box in this episode or even the past few episodes. That's totally mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. um, as usual, please like, share the love. And uh, yeah, you can follow all of our Instagram account um, to see what we are up to. Um, they are, they, we will 
probably edit the description box so that you can get all the information there. Mm. So thank you once again, everybody. And of course, big thank you to Cactus. Maybe you can show them already since they are here. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit messy, <laughs> but yeah. you will know that it's a this lot of work. This is the behind <laughs> the scene. <laughs> so we have Madeline and Cephas behind Cactus who is doing all the live streaming. Uh, that's Waylon's finger. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much, everybody, and we hope to see you sometime. Bye-bye. Mm.